Sorry, my black brothers and sisters. He is not a black man from America or Africa. He is not a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. If you want to look at it, look at the people who attacked 911 our building. He looked like an Arab. The Palestinians and the Jews over there looked alike. So Egypt looked alike. They were people of color, but they had no uh, origin of Caucasian, blonde hair, blue eyes, and no African heritage of I'm a black man. Don't throw that scripture at me that said he had bronze feet and woolly hair. That represents his authority. That represented his royalty. It had nothing to do with his color, because Jesus ain't about color. They distinguish you by the region and the country you came from. So if they said Egypt, they knew you were a person of color. If they said Niger or Cush, that meant you were a black man. If they said uh, Rome or uh, uh, some other country in European, they knew. But they, that's what, they had no racism there. They had no racism. Only we had that stinking thinking. Amen. 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 I thought I would clear that up. Amen. Amen. Go to Colossians chapter 1. But again, if I'm going to make a movie, and I got the money to make the movie, what color is Jesus going to be? Right. I'm making the movie, he's going to be black. <laughs> if a Chinese man making the movie, he's going to be Chinese. <laughs> Think about it. Whoever putting out the money, that's what color he's going to be. Hello. I'm going to spend $4 million to make sure. I mean, look at what uh, the greatest story I've ever seen was the Passion of the Christ. Mel Gibson did a great job. Yes, he did. But he used Catholicism and he had that thing on worshiping Mary. Matter of fact, you're not supposed to worship Mary. Or call, matter of fact, I got to prove that. I'm going to go here anyway. Go to uh, ooh, Matthew. <coughs> Matthew. I was just looking at that the other day. And it says, call no man father upon the earth. And it says, don't, wor don't worship uh, don't, don't worship Mary. Matthew what? Hold on one second, I'll get it for you. Okay. <laughs> this is on my screen here. We're going to look at, uh, my screen gets right. All right, go to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. And look at uh, verse 9. 23 and 9. It says, And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father, which is where? In heaven. Amen. Don't show me why I call him say, Father, God bless you, Father. Now, ain't nothing wrong with you calling your dad who's your daddy, Father. Ain't nothing wrong with calling God, Father. Amen? Amen. Ain't even nothing wrong with calling spiritual uh, mentors within your life. You know, that's my spiritual dad or whatever. But when you do that in worship, God got a problem with that. That's why you ain't supposed to go to no booth confessing your sins to no man. That priest can't handle that. I had a friend who lives in another country that I've been ministering to. Uh, and she speaks all these different languages, but she goes to a Catholic church. She went there to have a great time. She said, Warren, I went and she speaks, you know, broken English, but I went there to do my confession, and the priest told me that after I confessed my sins that I am a sinful person and a murderer, and I need a higher priest to, to cleanse me of my sin. And I'm like, what? So she said, I came out of service unhappy while everybody else was happy. I felt so alone. See what I mean? That priest don't have a right to condemn you. No. So if you had went straight to the Father, you wouldn't have that issue. You know what I mean? But I had to touch that with fine tooth comb. We have no reason going into a booth. I can't handle your sin, because you ain't going to tell me all of it anyway. Because God, God, God sees it all with you, want to believe it or not. That's why he says, confess it unto me. Because I already know what you did. Confession is for you to hear what your wretched self did. Not God, because he was there while you were doing it. God wants to realize that you're not in denial. Then the scripture tells us not to worship Mary. Why? Go. Stay in Matthew and go to 12. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. And we're going to look at uh, verse, I think we're going to start at 47. 
Matthew 12, verse 47. Uh, hold on, let me get my screen down here again. So we can get back on track. I don't know what's wrong with this. Uh... All right. Start at verse 47. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother. There you go. He sounded like he had some brothers after that, huh? Thy mother and thy brother uh, stand out, stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, who is my mom? Hello. Now, is he disrespecting Mary? No. Well, watch what he said. He said, who is my mother and who is my brother? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. Amen. And said, behold, my mother and my brother. For, so, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Hell Mary's ain't going to clean you up. Hello. Rubbing a bunch of beads ain't going to get you there. Humbleness of the heart is what's going to get you there. Amen. I hope I helped somebody with that. Go to Colossians chapter 1 now. Let's get back on track. Colossians chapter 1. We're still talking about Jesus is God. There's so many scriptures that said Jesus is God. But it also says, my sheep hear my voice. Whoever believes in him hears his voice. If you don't hear his voice, then you're just using his name. Do you know, I like what I heard the other day too. The devil uses Jesus' name. Because you know it ain't no power in his name. The devil ain't going to tell you, you know, claim things in the name of Satan. Because that's his title. But he ain't going to say, say in Lucifer name. Because people don't like it. So he got a whole lot of people fooled by saying, you know, in Jesus' name. But you're still sinning. You're still acting like a buck wild fool. But you're still claiming Jesus. And the devil loves that. Because he's an imitator and a liar. What does Antichrist mean? He does everything contrary to the word of God. And he imitates Jesus every single way he possibly can to fool you. That's why Jesus said, many, many Antichrists shall come. But how are you going to know the truth? The only way you're going to know is by reading and studying your word and asking God to show you. Or you're going to believe every wind of doctrine that comes from the pulpit. Don't believe me. Take a note. Read it for yourself. I'm not right on every single page, but I go to God and say, God, correct me, because I know I'm going to be held accountable for everything I said. Please don't, don't, say, don't go around talking, Warren Rudd said this. No. Show them the scripture that Warren Rudd brought out. But don't be sitting up here regurgitating what I said, because half the time you don't say it right anyway. That's why we got the Gospels. That's why it's three different versions of the story. Why? They were sitting right there, but everybody came up with a different side of the story, didn't they? But they were sitting right there. Hello. But let's, get, let's finish. Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers in the inheritance and the saints of life, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his what? Dear Son. Now, people are going to ride their son, uh, you know, especially Jehovah's Witnesses. They ride their son like it's like, you know, Excuse me, look at the capitalization. It's a capitalized y'all. Huh? What now? That, that word capitalized is the Greek word weos. And it means one who displays the character and characteristics of the Father. Hello. Because Jesus said, everything I see my Father do, I do. And if he's God, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> but let's keep reading. Verse 14. And who we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, I want you to underline this one. This is the powerful one right here. Who is the image? Underline image. Who is the image of the what? Invisible God. The firstborn of what? Every creature. Now, what does image mean? Do y'all ever go somewhere and you go into an office and you know sometimes you have a secretary and she have a stamp of the boss's signature? And she says, I need the signature, and they stamp it on ink and put it down there. Or you go to a, a, a person to get something notarized, a notary public, and they take their clamp, stamp it. Yeah. If you were to take Jesus' face and stick it in it and then put it on paper, you'd 
you'll see God. That's what it means by the image. He is an express image that if you were to take his face and put it on some ink and put it down there and lift it up, you will see God. Amen. That's what express image means. Amen? Amen. I know some people have problems problem with that. He's the walking stamp of God. Amen? Amen. God came down in physical form, and he's the walking, talking stamp of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Did y'all get that? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 to 3. God, who at some dry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his what? Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made. The what? World. Did it say world? World. So how in the world can you think planet Earth is the only place? Doesn't it say worlds? Oh God, I'm messing up somebody's theology now. <laughs> Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself poured, purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, what else did I want to bring out? Do I want to get there later? No. Let's go to John 14. We're going to come back to that, though. But something I want to bring out in John 14. Let's go to John 14. I got these scriptures organized in the way that I want them. But there's something I want to bring out. Because, see, so many verses tell us that Jesus is God. But you got to be one of his to see it. Sorry. It's a mystery or just a great book and a great story. And then the devil got you because you said, I'm going to go to sleep. I don't want this. The devil put you to sleep. That's all. I like what Ryan said in the beginning. I ain't never heard him say that. Usually Ryan said, you're going to sit here and hear the gospel. Ryan gave y'all permission to go today. If nobody wants this gospel, go today. He had no idea what I was going to be talking about. I ain't never heard him get that permission. I was expecting to see half the room get up and leave. But praise God, you stayed. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all was afraid you were going to write your name down. You couldn't come back tomorrow? You want to be <laughs> John 14. Because Jeffrey over here taking notes. <laughs> John 14. Look at verse 8 and 10. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Watch this. Philip looking at him said, Lord, show us the Father. And it, and it sufficed us. Jesus said to them, Have I been so long time with you, and you has not thou known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the what? Oh, has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father. That the world of where? In me, he doeth the what? Words. But ain't that some fella? You've been with me this long and you don't know? You've been walking and talking and watching everything I'm doing, but you still don't know? Hello. Go to John chapter 10. John, you can find more scriptures because John is about the deity of Christ. That's why it's not a synoptic. It's a gospel, but it's not a synoptic, synoptic because it talks about the deity of Jesus. But John chapter 10, verse 29 to 33. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my, my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. Hello. Then the Jews took up stones again to kill him. <laughs> Why? Why did they take up those stones to kill him? No, Jesus no, answered them, uh-huh. Jesus answered, verse 32, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my Father, for which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou, because that thou being a man, maketh thyself God. Even the Jews knew he was 
call him God, call himself God. Hello? See, when he said, I am the father of one, it's a Hebrew word called Yaakov. They were jealous. It's a Yaakov. So every time we say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, it's Yaakov. They're one, meaning one. Every time somebody got married in Hebrew, they said they were Yaakov together. So me and my wife are Yaakov together. That means we're one. If we were to have a baby, that baby would be Yaakov, the Rudd family, with three different personalities. Yeah. But they're still one. In God's eyesight. That's why other religions can't understand the Yaqah, God. That's why we don't believe in a trinity. We believe in a triunity. What's a triunity? One times one times one equals what? One. One plus one equals one. No, one plus one plus one equals one. I'm looking at you. Are you somebody's father? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. You don't have any. Who got kids? Okay. Come on. You always call me Philly anyway. You somebody's father? Both definitely. Are you somebody's son? Both definitely. Do you have a spirit? Yes. Oh, and yeah. how many of you? Uh -huh. Ooh, hello. And you trying to tell me God can't have as many as he wants? Yeah. Look at Isaiah, Isaiah 11 and 2. It says God has seven different spirits. That's right. He's God. If you want 95,000, he can have it. Amen. 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 All right, preach. So if all of them is in one man, and God said we made in his express image, hello. Come on. Go see him. Go back to Hebrews. God even called Jesus God. That's right. Amen. Oh, sucky, sucky. I'm going to get in trouble for this one. No, I ain't because I'm going to prove it. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Back to Hebrews 1. It sounds like y'all getting something out of this. Yeah. Changing y'all understanding a little bit, huh? Christmas will never be the same, will it? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right. Go to Hebrews 1 now. Look at verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God, what? Worship him. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? And here we go, y'all. Underline this one. Highlight it. Now, this is God talking. What did he say here? But unto the Son, he said, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of your righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Look at that. He said, and unto the Son. Am I lying here? And unto the Son, he said, thy throne, O God. Hello. That's God calling Jesus God. Oh, oh they don't like me now. Let's keep reading. Verse 10. No, verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed, I mean, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Matter of fact, the Lord just told me to go here to prove it. Here's the one, um, uh, uh, the whole witness is always good. Ready? Yeah. Second John. This one ain't in my notes, but I got to throw it in there. Second John. It's only one chapter, I think, in there. But this is so important. I ain't got my war Bible with me. No, it ain't. Hold up. Yeah, it is Second John. And I believe it is verse... Yep, Second John... No, nope, make it 1 John 5. I'm sorry, y'all. 1 John 5. This ain't in my notes, so, but it's falling out of my spirit. But I know it's there. And I don't like people saying, well, you couldn't find it. Well, I'm going to find it. Amen. 1 John 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come. Now, that's what they're going to do. He's the Son of God. But I like to say this to them. Every time they come at me with that, I'll say, is he, is he Jesus God? No, it's the Son of God. Is Jesus God? No, it's the Son of God. I said, three times you're going to deny him. Is Jesus God? No, it's the Son of God. I said, well, if you deny me, he will deny you. Amen. 
Amen. So, but watch this. Pay close attention. Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is what? True. And we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ. Read the next line. This is the true God and eternal life. Hello. Boy, look how quiet that. But they separate them. Only people who are born again can see that he's the true God. Is that what the scripture said? How are you going to take that away? It's even in the New World Translation. It's in their own Bible, but they don't see it. Hello. I just I thought I'd take a little side break. Go back to Colossians chapter 1. I'm not beating up any other religion. I'm just telling the truth. All the religions across the world right now are, are in their houses praying for what happened in our country. That's well and beautiful. But the truth remains that there's still only one Lord and Savior. You cannot come unto the Father except by Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So Colossians 1, man, you got to have a little bit more compassion. It ain't me. I'm just reading the scripture. Amen. See it for yourself. It'll be all right if any man finds something to keep him from doing wrong. Well, not doing wrong is still sending you to hell if you're serving the wrong God. The devil don't care if you don't if you doing think doing nothing wrong. Muslims don't do nothing wrong all day long, supposedly. But they're going straight to hell. Why? Because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. I got plenty of family members that believe in other religions. But why? They still going to hell. I love them. But I know they're going to hell. <laughs> the only thing that comforts me is when I get to heaven, I ain't going to feel that pain about them in hell. Because God said there won't be no more pain, no more sorrow. So my family members that made it to heaven, I'm going to be there. Hello. How y'all doing? I mean, it's sad, but I love it. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Hello. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. I ain't got to get down on that Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to give y'all as many scriptures as I can until my time runs out. i got about another 15 more minutes. Come on. Ephesians chapter 3, look at verse 8 and 9. 8 and 9. And unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I shall preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. See, there's a mystery. Which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God. Who created all things by who? Jesus. Christ Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. Back to John 1. Here's one that people know so famously. I got to keep flowing. John.